men pictured here and those shown before were all held prisoners of war at Camp 93 in Harpley during World War II. But what about the lady? What is her connection? We've all heard of German men being captured and held prisoners of war at one of the many camps around Britain. But what about German women? Was anyone aware of their existence as prisoners of war? No. No. Thought we were all men. German women? Yeah. Not German women, no, I didn't. I've yeah, never were, heard about were. women being held as prisoners, though. I suppose it'd be right, I think, you know. I don't know anything about German, Germans, women. I didn't realise the war. Yeah, yeah. Was it? There's, no, there's nothing in the um, in the books or films or anything is there to say that they were. I thought we were no, men. I thought we were all what, what men. They to be captured. I didn't know that the females actually were fighting in the war, taking a, an actual part in the. Did they have women in the army in Germany? Indeed, this lady is Gretchen Kilman, born Jason. She is also German and was also held prisoner of war here in Britain during World War II at a subcamp of Camp 93, where the men were. Harpley Camp in County Durham was home to these men, and hundreds more like them. Hidden from view by the tall trees that grew up around it, Camp 93 was forgotten for over 50 years until its rediscovery at the turn of this century. Now a major tourist attraction, it welcomes visitors from all around, to marvel at the 50 huts, which lie preserved amidst the rolling hills of the North Pennines. But what these visitors don't know is that Harbley Camp has a secret of its own, not forgotten, but never revealed to the outside world. Windleston Hall, subcamp of Camp 93, and once home to up to 150 female German prisoners of war, including the lady in the picture. I was curious to find out more about these women, and so went to speak to some local historians to see if they could shed some light on the subject. The, 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 ch the chance of you capturing women seems remote. You hear about um, instances where in the Far East the Japanese interned women in camps. I mean, that's been documented on, on films, but you know, it's, it's a subject that is very rarely likely to come up for the simple reason that uh, it's not a focus. When you think of soldiers captured in battle, you, you focus on atrocities to civilians, but the notion of t capturing women and detaining them is something that sounds unlikely. I studied Nazi Germany in the Civil War, what, like 10 years, 15 years, but I've never, nothing's ever came up on that. Uh, there's very little written about the uh, females, you know, taken into custody. Uh, I've dealt, of course, largely with the 402,000 male prisoners at the maximum who were here. And it was amazing to find there had been a small camp in County Durham with um, female, largely nursing personnel. From what I've studied, it goes against most of what the Nazis felt about women, you know, the, the roles in the house. Even later on, when there were married soldiers and were using 14, 15 year old boys, you don't see much documented evidence of women being used in the army. Um, so I thought if they did use them, it would have probably been sort of covert or secret. I've talked, as I say to you, uh, in, in previous conversations with Germans who were in the army. They say the only women who were employed were indeed uh, nurses, but they were not part of the armed forces. They didn't have, in Germany, the equivalent of wrens or ants or, you know, women's uh, uh, army uh, personnel. Uh, some of them worked in telecommunications, you know, sort of, uh, well, I suppose, again, ununiformed. Um, and uh, a few were concerned about, in Germany, with the anti-aircraft, uh, the flak, as they called it, uh, installations. But the ones I've spoken with were emphatic that they were not uniformed female um, uh, personnel, and therefore it's very strange to find that they were prisoners of war. So the experts weren't aware of their existence. Perhaps the local people of Windleston would remember the women.
I don't think there was ever women prisoners of war there. There could have been because everything was pretty segregated down there, but uh, I think there would be internees, but other than that, no women. Not prisoners of war anyway. The men would have been happy with it, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> when I was younger, there was one or two Nazis up there, which used to be controversy and the Nazi went. And they just stepped up, but I didn't know those women were there. You didn't know when the war was on that there was women there. These women were apparently nurses, some of them even members of the DRK, the German Red Cross. And according to documentary evidence found at the International Committee of the Red Cross in Geneva, they did exist, and they were held prisoners of war at Windelston Hall. I'm not holding security officers. <laughs> The documents are inspection reports on the windows and hall camp, which was visited by representatives of the Red Cross in 1944 and 1945. The ICRC visited prisoner of war camps to ensure that they complied with the rules of the Geneva Convention, and all records are kept here in Geneva. The reports oppose the views of experts, historians, and most locals. Uh, there were. Uh prisoners of war all over uh, the, the Second World War. These German nurses uh, were part of the German army. The main difficulty concerning these uh, German nurses was that we have to uh, identify uh, the, the, the exact camp. Uh, and uh, as this, as Windelsen Hall was a sub-camp, we had first to uh, find the main camp that was Arbelin. Camp 93. The Windelston Hall camp was inspected every couple of months and reports were produced in German, French and English depending on the nationality of the ICRC delegate. Uh, normally the, the, the ICRC delegate uh, could uh, speak privately with uh, what we call in French l'homme de confiance, or la femme de confiance, that, that was the prisoner who represented the, 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 all the prisoners. And normally, uh, this uh, this person was designated by the other, by the fellow uh, in Tunis, and the ICRC delegate could speak privately with this person in order to discuss the general treatment of the prisoners. The reports covered everything from living conditions to the amount of supplies, food, hygiene, sanitary conditions, uh, entertainment intellectual uh, possibilities like reading, libraries, etc. So most, most of the ICSC visit reports are constructed, uh, are constructed according to the same scheme. The prisoners live in a manor house, which is the property of a British politician. They have access to all the facilities and manage to occupy themselves well. The camp has electric lighting and heating. They live in dormitories of different sizes on the first floor and have a superb view of the countryside. Details of the uh, free time. They're allowed to go uh, um, for walks of one to two hours every day with the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service. Um, no sporting equipment is available. Uh, the, uh, they're allowed to roam freely from 7.30 in the morning until 7.30 at night. So I think some of them were annoyed because they mainly had to do Pratsarbeit, which is you know, hard work, cleaning work. Oh. And I say they felt too grand to do that to their six sisters. The nurses could also attend Roman Catholic and Protestant services every Sunday in the churches of neighbouring villages. St Aidan's Parish Church here in Chiltern was frequented by the Protestant women, whereas the Catholics among them travelled to St Joseph's in Camden. Perhaps then local people who attended this church at the time would remember the women. German women never gave the count of St. George's. And I should know, I was born in 1932, so I moved down to the According to the inspection reports, 
Members of the Auxiliary Territorial Service accompanied the women on these outings to church and also issued them with clothing from the ATS stores. One pair of leather shoes, one skirt, one pair of gloves, one coat, one bag. The coats, skirts, etc. mentioned are regular ATS uniforms that are chocolate brown without patches. It seems strange that German women were being issued with British ATS uniforms. It is not known whether the nurses wore their ATS attire to church, but if they did, this may explain why local people don't remember them. There used to be all kinds of service people used to come into church uh, when I was a choir boy, simply because they had, had people killed in the war, uh, they, 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 they came on for, uh, to memorial services, etc. So there was various uniforms in there, but really there were, there were uniforms of people um, who were relatives, possibly, of people who had been killed, George. But was this the case? The men at Camp 93 had to wear patches so they could easily be identified as prisoners of war. Why was it different for the women? Were their identities being guarded? Mr Lee, a former forestry worker close to the grounds of Windleston Hall, remembers the women and how they were dressed. These women were all in black, you know, all black and long black frocks, black socks and like high boots, very dour looking and and they, they, they had a, like a hand, bar, a hand cart and they were gathering wood and you would say to them maybe every day or every other day I was there a few weeks working and I always remembered it and whether they were prisoners or displaced persons they looked like prisoners to me you know and there'd be maybe a dozen of them they were never very near us they were always kept away from us and they must have been housed in in Winston Hall, I assume. And there's very few who knows anything about me. I saw one blonde, not very big, and not very far away from Winston Hall. Yeah, I can remember that absolutely. You know, blonde, she definitely had blonde hair and quite sturdy, quite sturdy. So I can, I can picture her. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should have took a bit more in the three. And the fact that they were soon got pregnant doesn't surprise me. That's just a fact of life, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The situation yeah. present themselves. <laughs> Someone know they were there, haven't they? <laughs> all right. Oh, I thought it was a baby, all right. Shasitzel, ex-prisoner of Camp 93, remembers the women and the baby. But I hardly seen some of them was pushing the pram there up there in the, in the farm for a road. Just twice I seen them. And they're, they're, they're about three days later, I've been uh, about two fields away and they've been shouting and waving. Nursing sisters suffer strongly from Heimweh, which is homesickness. Perhaps then the prisoners were happy to see a fellow German. After all, they must have been away from their homes in Germany for quite some time now. According to an investigation carried out by archivists at the ICRC, the majority of the women were captured in 1944 in places that were far from home for them. Rostock, Brest, Brussels, Normandy, Nijmegen, to name but a few and most were held at Windleston for the best part of a year. Some arrived later in 1945 from the Channel Islands. One of these was Gretchen Kilman, the DRK sister. It is not known who captured her or any of the other nurses, why they were brought to Windleston Hall, or indeed why they were being held as prisoners of war. Why were they captured? The argument for bringing uh, German nurses here would be that they were not in a position to hold them um, where they were. I mean, it would be foolish to try and keep them in a, in a battle area. Um, and perhaps it, it's the thought they were just packing and taking us back with a batch of prisoners and bring them to England, but segregate them from uh, you know, combat troops. Well, they were 
were brought here, uh, presumably to serve as uh, hospital personnel when um, the British uh, um, authorities set up uh, hospital facilities, nursing facilities, because with nearly a half a million, 400,000 men, they were likely to be quite serious cases of illness, and um, the British were not in a position, perhaps, to provide nurses and doctors um, on, on a regular basis for this army of people. That seems to be the more likely thing that they've kept them to work, but it may be that they've kept them to some sort of an interrogation reasons. A newspaper article taken from Evening Dispatch in 1983 suggests that the women were Nazis and that Windleston Hall was one of the most controversial homes of the war. But if this was the case, why do so few people today know anything about it? The article briefly mentions the commandant of the camp, Mrs. Heather Gracie. I went to the National Archives in Kew to see if there was anything in support of this claim that the German nurses were Nazis, or indeed that they were being held prisoners of war for interrogation reasons. There was nothing on the Windleston Hall camp itself but I did find a document marked secret about female nursing personnel with the German army. The German Red Cross Association, which is actually the main source of supply of nurses for the army, has more or less been taken over by the army and its members have become part of the military organization. As we know, Mrs. Kilman was a member of the DRK, as were the majority of other nurses in the camp. To join the DRK, women must be of German racial origin and national socialist views. So, were they Nazis? The journey of discovery has been an interesting one, revealing a secret hidden for over 60 years. The women remain a mystery. Will we ever find the truth surrounding one of the most controversial homes of the Second World War? Well, they'd be all right in County Durham, mind. Yeah, they were. <laughs>